Hey guys, Omar here, and today I wanted to talk about sharpening a little bit. I don't know why I did that with my hands. It's coffee. It's coffee. <laughs> now, I've been enjoying shooting Fuji's JPEGs. Everybody says it, and it's totally true. I add a little plus one to my sharpening, and the JPEGs look crispy, crispy. So in today's episode, we're going to look at a JPEG sharpening. And just for the simplicity of things, I'm going to stick to Lightroom and Photoshop. Those of you that know the Fuji culture, there's Capture One, there's Iridient Developer, there's uh, On One Raw Processors, there's Fuji's own raw processor, and I plan to look at these, but most of my workflow is Lightroom. So today we're just gonna talk Lightroom and how it sharpens and the terrible job it does, spoilers. And I'm gonna show you if you really wanted to get the sharpness or beat the sharpness that Fuji uses, what you can do. Now one issue you get from sharpening is worms. Worms! This happens when you over sharpen your images and Lightroom doesn't understand what it's doing so it makes all these weird lines. So we're gonna see if you've ever heard anything about worms, we're gonna see some worms today. Now we went to DC and I took a picture with the 56 1.2 lens which is crispy sharp. Okay, so we're, let's look at uh, Fuji's JPEG. Let's look at the raw and how it sharpens. Let's try to sharpen in Lightroom and then we're gonna sharpen in Photoshop and compare our results. All right, let's take a look at some worms. So here is a JPEG image I took last year with the 18 to 55. It was in the Yosemite Park. And if you zoom into the JPEG, you can see uh, that the rock here starts to get all these like little weird worms and this was the first time my first experience with the worms if you go to the raw file um, the raw file depending on how you sort of sharpen it you have less worms okay again we're talking lightroom now if you have capture one or uh, ir use iridient developer you're gonna get a little bit better results but again overall this is like zooming way in uh, as I've printed this photograph um, in large size and it looks totally fine. So you have to think about that too, what's your print size? All right, here's another example. This is straight out of JPEG. The only thing I did was give it one stop of light up and I'm gonna show you the sharpness. Now when I shoot the JPEG, I use a plus one sharpness on the JPEG and I think it gives like super crispy, delicious results. <laughs> I mean, look at this. This is uh, the spirit of St. Louis in Washington DC. This is the first airplane that went across the Atlantic, uh, Charles Lindbergh, all that good stuff. So if you look at the little flags that are on the, the airplane, you can see you can read Costa Rica. That's where we're headed next uh, tomorrow, which is great. And oh, look at that. It says, wow, Costa Rica, July 1st. That's very close to now. Uh, we have Puerto Rico over here, which is great. So you can read one to one. This is one to one, by the way. Your pictures will not, just a little hint, your pictures will look terrible if you start to pixel peep like this. Okay, and you're like, why are my pictures sharp? No, this is sharp. You're just way in there, man. Back up. You know, if you, this is what we see as the viewer. So um, if you're looking way close and you're saying my images are breaking apart, then you are, this is 11 to 1. <laughs> so these are, you start to actually see the individual uh, pixels, you have a problem. What you want to do is go to 1 to 1. 1 to 1 pretty much gives you a good representation. Does it look sharp enough? Great. Okay, so this is the JPEG. Now I want to show you the RAW and how it comes into Lightroom. So this is, the, this is the raw with no processing, no nothing. All right, so let's go in and look a little closer. You can see Costa Rica, yeah. Let me actually, hold on. Something cool, something cool. If I go to, this was taken at 1.2. And remember, that is not the sharpest part of a lens. If I wanted this to be super crispy, I should have shot it at uh, 4.5, 5.6, f8. But that's what's great about the 56 1.2. It gives you amazingly sharp results at 1.2, which allows this wall uh, to start to blow, go into you know blurriness. Okay. If I go down in Lightroom to right now, the profile is in Adobe Standard. I shot this JPEG in Classic Chrome, and you can with the newest Photoshop. This is uh, Photoshop CC version Johnson. I don't know what it is, but. If you have the newest version, it gives you the film simulation. So I'll show you how close it is. I'm gonna classic chrome it, and I'm gonna give it one stop of exposure, which is what the JPEG has about. Okay, JPEG on the left, raw on the right. So if you're looking at them, 
Uh, we're not even talking sharpness yet, but I like that it gets close to classic Chrome. And overall, you can see that the JPEG obviously is sharper because we've applied no sharpening. A raw file has nothing, no process done to it. So what I'm gonna do is sharpen as best as I can the raw file so I can show you what I, uh, we're dealing with here. And if you go to Lightroom and you go to your sharpening tools, uh, the first thing I like to do is if you hold the Option key down on a Mac, I don't know what it is in a PC. I ain't using no PC. Uh, if you hold it down, it gets rid of the color so you can actually see um, what the JPEGs are doing. So if I boost my sharpness all the way up, you may think that the picture is, you know, from far away looks great. Uh, but if you start to look up close, worms, baby, worms, you lose all kinds of crazy detail. The worms show up. So if you boost your sharpness too much, you're gonna get worms. So I'm gonna back it off until the worms disappear. And I'm gonna hold um, the option key again and use my radius. And the radius sort of works on the edges a bit there. Um, if you go too crazy, let's see what we get there. Eh, not so great. Uh, detail, detail. Detail gives you some wormage. Uh, you can see it in this blue a lot. Uh, I'll show you what the JPEG looks like if we're looking at them side by side. Now the JPEG's on the right, everything got flipped, but look what happens if you try to sharpen um, in Lightroom, you start to get like muck in the blue uh, and the JPEG doesn't have that muck. Now there's one more thing you can do here is tell Lightroom, here's the raw file, what the edges are and that's called masking. So I'm gonna hold the option key again and grab this slider and you start to pull it and this will apply sharpening only to the edges of things. So right now I wanna get rid of that muckness. I'm gonna put it all the way up and it's only gonna apply sharpening to the things in white, okay? So you see it got rid of some of that muck. So let me compare here. Got rid of some of the muck and muck. So let's look at the letters here. Raw is now on the left. Uh, and look at Costa Rica, how sharp the JPEG is. Hey guys, just a little aside here. I actually uh, did this after recording the video, but I used a new program I've been playing around with called Luminar by a company called Skylum, and it did a pretty good job with the Fuji RAW. I brought it in, and here's a Lightroom on the left, and if you look at the letters uh, from Skylum's RAW, how it programmed, nice and sharp. Anyway, we'll get to that. Back to the video. Uh, the, the raw one is not, is not as crispy, not as sharp. So I'll try some more here. Let's see what we can do with our sharpening without getting worms. The point of the story is things start to break apart if you sharpen in Lightroom. Okay, let me lower the detail, lower this, uh, and compare them now. Again, the JPEG is nice. Now, by the way, I am not an expert, obviously, in sharpening. I just sharpen and move sliders till it looks good. That's pretty much how all my <laughs> editing goes. Hey, if it looks good, stop. Um, so this ain't working for me. The JPEG is much sharper. So I'm gonna show you what you can do if you wanna sharpen a raw file. You're gonna have to use Photoshop. And I'm gonna show you how I sharpen in Photoshop to not get this break to get sharp, crispy photographs without without worms. All right, so here we go. Let's uh, reset everything. And I'm gonna make it classic Chrome again and give it that one stop of exposure. And we have no sharpening going on right now whatsoever. Sharpening is at, whoa, whoa, whoa. Trying to sneak in some sharpening there, zero. So I'm gonna right click and edit in CC 2018. Okay, the first thing I wanna do is duplicate my layer. So that's Command J, uh, Control J if you're on a PC, which I am not. And yep, we still have no sharpening going on. So the way I like to sharpen, everyone has a different way to sharpen, but this one works best for me, is I go to a filter, a sharpen, a unsharpen mask. I like the unsharpen mask. And I learned this method from someone a long time ago, but basically what you do is you, you sh amount is very high, like super high. You actually use the other two to control the amount of sharpening. So anything from like 400 to 500. So go nuts. I'm just gonna go up to like 422. It will vary with image. And now radius is if you go 
but crazy on radius, it's going to be disgusting. If you go zero, zero on radius, you're not going to get anything. The sweet spot is around 1, 1.0, 1.1, and you can see your results. So like if you start to go to 1.7, you get a little bit more sharpy sharpness. Uh, and I'm going to keep it somewhere between 1 and 1.7, so like 1 1.4, 1 1.2, 1 1.2. That looks super crispy. And then your threshold is the same thing. If you go nuts with your threshold, it does away with the sharpening. If you go zero, it sharpens the most, okay? So if I'm looking here, it looks like it's a little too crazy at zero. And again, the way I uh, edit is just with my face, with, sorry, with, <laughs> with, with my eyes. And that looks pretty sharp to me. So I'm gonna keep that. I'm gonna say aka. And if, if you see the before, after, before, after ain't got no worms brother ain't got no worms so let's save that command s okay so this is the edit now in lightroom and i'm going to compare it to let's compare it to the jpeg edit versus jpeg okay so the jpeg is on the right and the photoshop uh sharpening is on the left and i could already tell i could already tell that the photoshop one is really really crispy like ridiculous crispy you can read Costa Rica a little better. It does seem to have a little bit of noise in here, um, but it's not as bad whatsoever compared to the, gosh, the <laughs> Lightroom disaster with worms. So again, if you want to sharpen your photo, your your Fuji files, uh, Photoshop, maybe to finalize the sharpening using an unsharpened mask. Now the other thing you can do is if you go to Photoshop. Um, if you're if you're concerned with just sharpening one area, you can actually just add a mask. Uh, sorry, let me add a reverse mask. If you hit um, what is it? Command. Sorry. Yeah, I'm a Photoshop expert. Option. If you hit Option Mask, it actually gets rid of all the sharpening because a black mask gets rid of everything. Hit the B key for the brush tool, and then you can actually brush in the sharpening that you want, like maybe just St. Louis, maybe just the Injian, maybe just the flags. You know, So you can actually do selective sharpening uh, using the unsharpened mask and also this brush. That's another way to do it. Uh, another reason to shoot JPEG. It's just less work, less processing. The images look great. They're sharp. They're crispy, exposed well, great color. Why do you need a raw every time? Uh, let's read below and see what people have been doing with sharpening and I'll try to chime in as much as I can. All right guys, see you next time.